and welcome to GameSack. I thought I'd do a different episode this time and talk about cheating in video games. So what is cheating? Using an invisibility code is certainly cheating, but what about using a turbo controller with rapid fire? Or how about playing a game on an easier difficulty level? Can you say you beat the game if you used any of these methods? Moreover, is cheating fundamentally wrong? The answer is, I'm afraid, it depends. The first kind of cheating that I'd like to look at are built-in codes. These are codes that are purposely put into the game by the developer. One of the most famous examples is the Konami code. For example, in Contra, if you press up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start, you get 30 lives per continue in a single player game, making it much easier to finish. Obviously, it takes much more skill to beat the game with the default three lives per continue. There are many similar codes in games, especially in the 8-bit era all the way up to the 32-bit era, and they were often published in video game magazines. These days, websites like GameFAQs are good searchable places to find codes for games. Some codes, like in Space Harrier, offered a continue feature and it was even printed in the manual. Is that cheating since it was officially sanctioned in the included manual even though it doesn't have an actual continue screen? What's interesting about this game is that it has two different types of continue. The first one is in the manual like I mentioned. The second one is basically the Konami code. You have to press up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, down, up, down, up before the music stops playing on the game over screen. The code that was published in the manual will let you continue three times, but this one will let you continue up to nine times. There are also codes for invincibility in many games where you can just literally walk through the game without getting damaged by an enemy. Or codes to get all of your weapons and shooters without having to work to gather them all up. And of course, level selects which let you start at any level you like instead of at the very beginning. Many codes like these were implemented to make the game easier for testing and debugging and were often removed before the game was released. Sometimes the developer forgets to remove them or purposely leaves them in there for the players to find. The Konami code became so well known that some games will actually give you undesirable results if you try to enter it, like Gradius 3. Or Gradius, Gradius, I don't know. If you pause the game and enter the code, you immediately die. <laughs> That'll teach you, you cheater. Konami wasn't without sympathy for struggling players though, you just needed to substitute the L and R buttons for the left and right directions in the original code to fully power up your ship. So is this all cheating? Well, yeah, of course it is. These codes aren't meant to be used during regular gameplay, however they are included by the developer, so it's not a malicious form of cheating in my opinion. But say you used one of these codes to make it all the way through the entire game. Can you brag to the other kids on the playground the next day that you beat the game? I'll be honest, I've done that when I was younger. Nobody questioned it, but I knew. It's definitely a hollow victory. But for me, it was a way to see further into the game. I like to see everything that the game offers. But I've never used a code on a game without giving it several real attempts first. If a game doesn't make me want to try again and again to get better, I'll see if there's a code that can help. My favorite kinds of codes are those for sound tests if the game doesn't straight up offer that feature in the options menu, because I love me some video game music. How do you feel about level select codes? Is that cheating? How about games with passwords? Isn't that basically the same thing? You're starting over on the level where you died, assuming that you use the level select code for that purpose. Many games like Castlevania 3 feature passwords so that you can start where you left off on the same level with the characters you've obtained so far. However, passwords are a bit more personal. You have to earn them, or at least you're supposed to. The next kind of cheating is through the use of actual physical cheat devices like the Game Genie or Pro Action Replay. These products let you put in certain codes which temporarily altered the parameter of the game's RAM or ROM to offer results that were never intended by the game's developers. Game Genies exist for the NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, and Game Boy. The Pro Action Replay line offers similar results and is argued to be even more powerful in what it can do and has products available even for the PlayStation and the Saturn. Depending on the code, almost anything in the game can be done. Simple things like extra ammunition to all-out invincibility are possible. Or even weird things like jumping higher or every time you press a button you die. 
On Sonic the Hedgehog 1, you can even put in a code on the Genesis Game Genie to modify the bonus stage rotation routine by causing the game to ignore one line of code. This results in a much smoother rotating animation. And it's super cool. Nintendo famously opposed the NES Game Genie and even took Galoob to court over its existence, claiming that it created derivative works of their copyrighted intellectual properties. The court disagreed, citing that it's similar to fast-forwarding a movie or skipping pages in a book. Also, the changes go away once the console is powered down. The NES Game Genie is bad though, as it can ruin the cartridge port on your system in short order, and it doesn't work well with a top loader. I'm not actually about to put this in my system, but I can show you what it looks like by running a Game Genie ROM on a flash cartridge here. Personally, I really like using Game Genie style codes for neat tricks like the aforementioned Sonic bonus stage. But sometimes if there's a game that has defeated me again and again and I have no real interest in practicing or playing much anymore, I'll use a Game Genie code to see the whole game if there aren't already built-in codes. I would have otherwise probably never played the game again, so at least the Game Genie gives me reason to pull it down and explore more. Can you brag to the other kids on the playground that you beat the game if you used one of these cheat devices? Definitely no. I've never done that, but then again I've never owned any cheat device in its time. I always bought them decades later just for fun. And that's what they are, fun toys to tinker around with. You may be wondering why I keep talking about bragging to the other kids on the playground about beating a game. It's actually one of the few examples I can think of where other people might be impressed or care that I actually beat a game. Not that I'm trying to diss streamers or speedrunners or anything, what they do is actually very, very impressive. It's just that for the average gamer, I don't think it's a huge bragging point. Anyway, let's talk about controllers for a bit. I think this is kind of a gray area when it comes to cheating. So you're busy playing through your favorite game with the controller that came with your console. It's fun, but man, you just can't get far enough because you can't press the buttons fast enough to cause massive damage to your enemies. <laughs> but then you buy a weird third-party controller that has a rapid fire or turbo switch that you can enable. Suddenly, you can fire your weapon super fast without any effort at all. As a result, you're able to get further into the game. Is this cheating or is this awesome? Certainly the developer didn't mean for you to use rapid fire or they would have just built that into the game, right? What about first party controllers made by the console manufacturer like the NES Advantage or the NES Max, both of which offer turbo features? Or how about the rapid fire unit for the Sega Master System which attaches to any controller? It can even attach to the light phaser and all you have to do in most games is hold down the trigger to win. These are all optional accessories and nobody has to buy them. Only filthy cheaters would buy them, right? But what about consoles like the Turbo Graphics 16? It comes with a controller that has built-in turbo switches. However, the PC Engine, which is what the Turbo Graphics 16 is known as in Japan, originally did not come with controllers that had these switches. But this was soon changed and every NEC console came with a controller that has this turbo option. In fact, the manuals for most games will even suggest what position to have these switches in in order to be most effective for that particular game. So if you beat Fantasy Zone or any other game on the system with these switches engaged, did you cheat? In my opinion, absolutely not. You're using features that were included and advertised with the console. There is no reason to feel like you had an edge that you shouldn't have had, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You still absolutely beat the game. Is it more impressive to beat the game without the switches engaged? Well, sure. But it's also more impressive to beat the game with only one life, not collecting any power-ups or not getting hit. There's no shame at all using rapid fire on turbo graphics or PC Engine games. But how about other systems which did not include rapid fire controllers in the box? This is where it's more of a gray area for me. I don't feel that there's really any shame here, but at the same time, this ability wasn't included. You had to seek it out and buy it separately. I don't have many rapid fire controllers for different consoles personally, at least not ones that I actually use. I just have a bunch of them that I'm saving up for an eventual episode where I want to talk about crappy controllers. It's coming eventually, I promise, I just need to get more crappy controllers. Then again, I'm pretty good at pressing the button fast enough for a natural rapid fire like I'm doing here. I feel that using the slow motion feature built into some controllers can be cheating though. And honestly, it's also annoying. 
I can't imagine people using this feature very much. Still, most of the games that I absolutely need rapid fire for, like shooters, usually has it built directly into the game. The reason I need it is because you're firing almost literally all the time in these games. How about games with adjustable difficulty? If you play a game set to easy or anything below the default setting, does that make you less of a gamer? Did you really beat the game if you finish it in this mode? Do you even qualify as a living human being with actual rights if you play on easy? Some games, like Ghouls and Ghosts on the Genesis, actually default to the easiest setting. You can tell by the word practice at the bottom of the screen. Rarely have I ever seen anyone play this without that word boldly emblazoned at the bottom of the screen for the entire world to see. When I first got this game 60 years ago in 1989, I played on practice. In fact, that's how I learned to play it. This, combined with a hidden invincibility feature I saw in a game magazine, really allowed me to learn the ins and outs of the game. It was several years before I tried the professional mode. Now I can just walk through this game with ease on professional. I don't feel that there's anything wrong with playing on practice though. It does scale things back and helps you learn the stage layout and some enemy patterns. And this can be said about almost any other game with difficulty settings. Pick one that's comfortable for you, but I'd recommend you try whatever the default mode is the first few times you play it. If you finish the game with it set to easy, then you can say you beat it. There's no shame in that, in my opinion. Of course, some games won't let you beat them on easy, which personally I think is kind of lame. If that's what the developers want to do, why even bother including an easy mode in the first place? I'd honestly rather not have any mode where I can't go through the entire game. On a similar note, I don't feel that it's cheating if you adjust the number of lives and continues to the maximum allowable amount in the option screen before you start your game. If you're gonna give me the option, hell yeah, I'm gonna take it. At the very least, it gives me more opportunities to practice my skills at the parts that are hard for me rather than having to waste my life going through the parts of the game that I'm good at just to practice again. So yeah, why wouldn't I increase them? Have you noticed that I'm asking a ton of rhetorical questions in this episode? Should I ask more? Should I ask fewer? Why am I asking so many questions instead of just giving my own opinion? Am I afraid to commit to an answer? Why did I come on camera just for this part? Will someone add up the total number of questions I ask in this episode? Will I even get back to this episode? Is this even real life? So much to ponder. There are many other ways to get help finishing games that technically aren't you using your sweet skills to complete. Strategy guides used to be a big thing. These would basically give you a walkthrough on any given game along with maps, pictures, and other hints. Nintendo Power was pretty famous for having detailed strategy guides every other issue. There are also websites like GameFAQs which offer written walkthroughs on just about any game you can think of. Granted, it's just boring text, but the better guides are written well enough where you don't need pictures to help guide you. Would you call this outright cheating or maybe just hand-holding? I've never used a strategy guide as I didn't want to pay money for such a thing. Well, actually, I did use some maps for Alex Kidd published in a magazine back in the day. I've used GameFAQs to help me get through tough areas of different games which I could just not figure out. Some guides on there, though, are written so poorly that they only made things worse in the long run. Can you say you've beaten a game if you've gotten some kind of help or hints, be it from a guide, a friend, or even people in your live stream chat? How about if you beat a two-player game with a friend? Can you say that you beat the game? As I asked in this video's thumbnail and title, where is the line drawn? And does there even really need to be a line? Is this all really that important?
The last area of cheating I want to look at is something that doesn't go all the way back to the days of 8-bit gaming. Things like save states exist in emulators and on modern console flash cartridges. Basically, a save state will let you save exactly where you are in any game at any time. If something bad happens, you can reload that save state and try again from there. In my opinion, this is a great way to learn the game. However, it is absolutely cheating if you're using it for a speedrun or for high score championship purposes. There are some speedruns out there that are called TAS, or Tool Assisted Speedruns, which use save states to get the best run imaginable, and they don't try to hide that fact. And that's perfectly fine. Then there's the Rewind feature, which is popular in some emulators. It's also available in classic games on the Switch and mini consoles like the SNES Classic. Personally, I feel the Rewind feature is great. If you mess up, you can actually rewind the gameplay for a few seconds and try that same thing again. You can keep doing it until you get it right. It's similar to a save state, but it differs in that you don't have to constantly worry about creating a save state to begin with. The console keeps track of it for you. The rewind feature is perhaps the best way to learn the difficult parts of any game and the quickest way to train. Many racing games like Forza Horizon 3 here actually have the rewind feature built in and they encourage you to use it. So even though that this is cheating, it really isn't since it's part of the game. If you use the rewind feature or save states and end up beating the game, can you brag about it to those kids on the playground that are still waiting to be impressed? No, no, not in my opinion. But you know what? I bet you're in a far better position now to beat the game without any assistance because you were able to quickly learn thanks to the rewind feature. Should you be forced to learn a game the traditional way by playing the early levels over and over and over again just to get up to the spot that's giving you trouble? I don't think so. Learn the game any way you can. Doing it this way or that way doesn't make you a better or worse person. What can kind of ruin the experience are the white Tanuki suits in lots of modern Mario games. For example, in Super Mario 3D World on the Wii U here, if you die five times on a single level, you have the option to get this white suit. And in some of the upper levels, dying five times is really not hard to do. Anyway, this suit makes you completely invincible for the entire stage. Fortunately, it's optional. Other games like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Switch default to an extremely easy mode. Do you see that little antenna sticking up? That means assisted steering is on and you're cheating without even knowing it unless you make it a point to learn what that antenna even means. Of course, there are still many different kinds of cheating, like paying Chinese companies to level up your character in an MMORPG while you sleep. I don't play those types of games at all. There's also some hacking methods so you get tons of headshots in first-person shooter games. Overall though, I feel like any kind of cheating in any online game is bad and malicious. I can certainly understand why such players have their accounts banned and they 100% deserve it. Aside from that, do I feel that cheating in games is a bad thing? No, absolutely not. Just as long as you're having fun, that's all that matters. I never really care that much when someone says that they beat a video game. Though I can certainly be impressed at some feats that some people can perform. Like this rad trick I'm doing here in Super Monkey Ball. Check out my skills here, see that? Don't my skills at this game make me so cool? Like I'm a better human being because of this, right? I am so skilled at this video game! Okay, no, 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 I'm just being silly. I'm not better than you. Well, I'm better than you at this game, but I'm not better than you as a human being or even as a gamer. It's just, like I said, silly. Others might have lots of fun trying new ways to make it to the goal. And that's what I feel gaming is all about, fun. And if you're having fun, I'm not gonna crap all over you for using any other method other than just brute forcing your way through a game. The only time that is bad is if you claim your skill is actually better than it is. Please, don't do that. If you suck at a certain game, or even all games, that's okay, I still think you're cool, just as long as you're having fun. Trust me, there's plenty of games I suck at, plenty. If you beat a game using codes or rewind features, more power to you. That really doesn't bother me in the least. And it shouldn't bother you either.
So those are my thoughts on cheating, and honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal, at least outside of competitive gameplay. I may be way better at Ghouls and Ghosts and Super Monkey Ball than you are, but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy them any way you want. So what are your thoughts on this subject? I expect each and every one of my rhetorical questions to be answered by every single one of you. From memory, don't go using that rewind feature on YouTube to see what I asked. That's cheating. Let me know. In the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. You know, I really want to beat Metal Storm on the NES, but I'm not very good at it. I don't want to look up Game Genie codes and have to punch them in and then press buttons all the way through the game. There's got to be an easier way I can beat this one. Oh yes, and done. I found a long play on YouTube, marking this one off as a game I beat. Hmm. What game should I beat next?